Hey, I'm back, and in this video, I want to share with you the simplicity of why people can't lose weight using these simple batteries right here. So over here, we have a very large battery, okay? This would be equivalent to your fat, okay? An average person who is not overweight is carrying around about 100,000 calories of potential energy. A person that is overweight or obese is carrying probably double that, 200,000 calories. I think that's like 13,000 grams of fat, okay? Now, over here, we have a smaller battery or energy storage. This is called glycogen. This has 1,700 calories of potential energy. So we've got 100,000 to 1,700. And then we got this tiny little battery, which is carrying around about 15 calories, okay? About four grams of sugar in your blood. It's like one teaspoon of sugar right here for the blood sugar to be normal. Okay, of course, an average person is consuming a lot more than that, but these are the three types of fuels that you're actually running your body on. Now, wouldn't it make sense that you'd wanna tap into fat? So rarely does an average person ever get a chance to tap into the fat, simply because they don't understand this one simple thing. There's a switch right here, which tells the body if it's gonna burn fat or glycogen, or the sugar in the blood, okay? And that switch is insulin. If insulin goes up, okay, this becomes blocked, and you're only using this right here. If we reduce insulin, then we can tap in the fat right here. Now, the big question is what controls the insulin? Two things, it's the amount of carbs that you consume, and the frequency of how many times you, cons you eat in general. Those two things increase insulin and keep you right over here, okay? If you consume a lot of carbs, like a lot of people do, an average American consumes over 250 to 300 grams of carbs, okay, every day. To be able to burn fat, you have to bring that down to less than 50. Now, when you chronically consume a lot of carbs, okay, you start developing damage with this switch. It's called insulin resistance. Now it's gonna be really hard to tap into fat even when you do things correctly. Now, when you finally get someone on the right plan and you decrease the frequency of eating, you decrease the carbs, it could take some time to fix this switch, okay? It could take a month, could take six months or longer. The key is sticking to it until the switch is fixed so you can eventually tap into the fat. And this explains why it takes some time with certain people to really tap into the fat, simply because they have a lot of insulin resistance, because they've done the carb thing chronically too long. The best thing to do is to focus on other indicators of health, because it's get healthy to lose weight, not lose weight to get healthy. I'm talking about your cravings and your hunger. If that's going down, if your energy is going up, then that means it's working. All you have to do is give it more time. Now, for those of you that are new, I put a link down below of exactly how to combine lowering your carbs and not eating so frequently. It's called healthy ketosis and intermittent fasting. So click the link down below, study it, learn about it, apply it, get the results, but make sure that you focus on getting healthy first before you start losing the weight. And that way you won't set yourself up for a failure. Thanks for watching. So if you want more knowledge on how to create a healthy body, subscribe now and get daily notifications.